Why are there so many bolts holding this on here? Because you haven't taken them off yet, Mark. Uh, so we have two different styles of seats. That seat I see in actual Humvees all the time. It's like some super cheap Smitty built seat. And I, it looks like a reclining seat, but it's not. But they're on Amazon Prime for like a hundred and something dollars shipped like next day kind of thing. So I picked up one of those just to test fit it. We're pulling out the military seat. God, Mark, you're so loud. No, keep going. We pulled out, we are pulling out the military seats. So all of these things are four seaters basically. Either in the pickup truck. Jeez. Even if it's in a pickup truck configuration, uh, so there's seats underneath the bed here, pop them up, fold them out. Uh, we're gonna leave those, the super uncomfortable military versions, because no one's gonna be in the back very much. But the front, we're testing out two types of seats. Both are really cheap. These are the suspension ones I've mentioned before, uh, but they lean back a little bit and take up kind of a lot of space. And this thing does not have a lot of interior space. And this is kind of high because it's the battery box and everything. So if I put this seat into position, there is not a lot of space between your legs hitting the dash and everything. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure what to do about this yet. We'll figure it out though. I think the driver's seat's gonna be way easier though because there's not batteries underneath it. One, there's a lot more room. And two, because Mark is doing it. If you've never made a seat mount, this is what you do is you stare at it forever and you make a bunch of like, maybe this is better, maybe this is better, maybe we should do this. And that's at the point we are right now. So the things that we're interfering on with this Humvee is the seat belt bracket and little, what do you call these things, rolly thing is in the way on both sides, but it's not so in the way on the passenger side, or on the driver's side. But we're thinking about maybe building a little tiny just metal bracket there and moving the thing back, but it's a whole lot easier not to do that. That side's gonna be more difficult, even though this side looks crazy easy to mount because all we're doing is basically drilling four holes and mounting it to the battery box. This is the battery box. So I don't know, Mark. I don't know. Either. Oh, look, it came with instructions. You were I didn't look at the instructions. I don't ever look at instructions. I feel like this, these instructions are inadequate for telling you how to put this seat in a Humvee. I keep making parts runs while Mark keeps making progress, except he's mostly in the dismantling and making a puddle progress. He just changed the belts on it, which I did not show. Uh, he is mounting a winch right here. And there's the winch. We went super Amazon Prime special cheapest 12,000 pound winch I could find with synthetic rope. The synthetic rope is just kind of a nice thing so I don't cut my hands and stuff when uh, running metal wire across them. And it's also lighter. Uh, and I've never actually had a synthetic winch rope set up. I've always had wire and the wire lasts forever, which is nice, but the rope doesn't. But we're just gonna see, I've never really used it. This is where he's putting the winch, dismantled stuff and he, is walking around trying to get away from me so he can beat on it. We bought a cheapo winch plate. Universal. Winch universal plate. winch plate. And we obviously got it too big so we'd have extra material. And he's going to, he cut all that, notched it, and then notched there. And he's gonna try and bend it over so it's gonna sit in here like this from these bolt holes down, across, and then back up. And then the winch will sit right here. And we're gonna tuck it up as high as possible without interfering with all of this stuff. Uh, yep. Oh, uh, look at Mark, he's acting all shy. I don't like being so shy. Thing. Here comes try one. Oh God, it's so loud. Looks like it's working. Work better. Better. And now he's out of, he has to lift it more. Much beating on it. And now, without any welding or anything, he's made that so far, which is kind of cool.
bent that up into place and it's looking like a real thing. Maybe. Are you happy with that, Mark? Maybe. We'll see. Maybe? Maybe? This, this is okay. I might need to bend it back out some. I yeah. think I hit it on the ground too hard. But well, I gotta do this side next and take out these big ass bolts. All right. Quick tech tip. Mark is showing us how to make this cut to bend everything up is all he did was that piece he's bending out right now is the height of this. So you take the height of this, lay it out, cut it out, and then that's gonna give you the ability to cut and swing up precisely. Is that accurate? If you have the right tools, yeah, you can get precise. So just like ignore that gap. Yeah. But yeah. He's, he's just, just helping with my rock crawler. It doesn't have to be super awesome, but that's it's gonna be nicer than I did. I did. It'll work when it's all welded up. You won't even be able to tell if there's a gap there or anything. Cool. But that saves us from having to make a whole nother piece, put it up, weld it, and do all that. And that's just one piece of metal. So that's super nice. Good job, Mark. It's stronger than it would be too with uh, like separate pieces butted up against each other and welded. Yeah. Because it's still one solid piece. Like this has still got some rigidity. I'm gonna weld on the inside of that across there and then weld all this up. Cool. So That's how to make one winch plate do all the parts you need. Fancy. Now he just has to make a notch in that and then bang that up. And then we have the whole thing made except for bolting it in, cutting bolt holes in that. Welding everything. Welding everything and putting it in. It fits, you know, of course it'll fit. Things. Do you have a plan if it doesn't fit? And then he beats the whole thing down as well as he can. And then he gets to the point where he has to beat it like that. Here, Mark faces his next dilemma. As he takes out the bolts, holding the part of the vehicle together that he wants to put the winch attached to, the hood mount is going to fail and fall off. This is the hood mount. It is held on by the three bolts right here. And once this happens, this whole piece falls. How is he gonna stop this? I'm Mark. Sure it fall. It's not yes. my vehicle. Mm, good plan. How big are all these bolts on this thing? Uh, Bigger these... than Volkswagen bolts? Yes. These are 24s. So these are pretty big. The rest of them are small, like 19s. It takes 24 millimeter bolts to hold the hood on on this thing. That's yeah. kind of crazy when you think about it. <laughs> That's exactly what these are for is the hood. And it has three of them. I'm on a dolly cam. It's beautiful. Is it gonna fit, Mark? It's gonna wedge, yeah. Mark has been test fitting the thing over and over and over again, cutting out little pieces as he goes of the back of it to get it to snug up as tight as possible, leveling it up now. And now we're limited by this hose, this coolant hose that's paint on it, which, which is like why it's all cracked. Um, and now he's got to figure out how to get those bolt holes in there, drill them in, and then he's about ready to mount this thing and be done. All done, correct? No. No. Because you still gotta no. wire it. Yeah. You have to wire it while I do your seat. Oh God. You really trust me not to burn it down? Mm -hmm. Oh, we should really figure out where to mount the box, the controller box. Let me go find it. I've never had one of these controller boxes mounted to like a winch. I always just have a winch like that. Now we have to find somewhere to put this whole thing. It has remote controls and stuff. And I would honestly rather not have this thing at all. Like, but we're stuck with it because the controller's on it. I'd really like prefer the controller to be on there. <sighs> we'll figure it out.
Today on Stupid Stuff Aaron Does, we took the Humvee off-road and it turned off for some reason. It's doing fantastic out here on the trails, but it doesn't work too well if it doesn't run. It was completely non-dramatic. It just died, turned off, and now we're trying to figure out why. Uh, Mark got dirty. Mark, if you get dirty, you can't get back in the vehicle. The vehicle has to stay clean. Yeah, except that I didn't put the new seat in, so we're good. Okay. So far, we've checked a bunch of things. We have Humvee mechanic friends that keep telling us to look at certain things. We've looked at the injection pump. Supposedly, there's a piece of it that overheats. Some wires on it. Check fuel pressure. Uh, and that's about all we know about these things. Mark, do you confidently know what's wrong? Absolutely not. Okay, every time we like jiggle something or change something, we have to try and restart it. Restart it, Mark, let's see, come on. Start, start, start. No. Damn. I was hoping that would be it. And we only have so much battery juice to keep doing this. That's a big motor. Hmm. Hmm. Don't look at me. Don't look at you, Mark. The cavalry's coming to get us. We're not having, I'm not showing everything as we go because we're obviously kind of frustrated trying to get everything to work. But here comes the cavalry. That thing is so ridiculous. Those are Rockwells and 44s. Jeez. I don't know if it counts braking if it just turned off. We didn't figure out anything except how to bleed it, and now it runs, and now we can go drive. All right, let's go. Say hello, guys. Bye. He drives in Texas Street Legal. That's Jake Wise. And this is Lewis. He is a pit, what do you want to be called, a pit crew? Pretty much. For Zach? Yeah. Up. And he pits on the number one team for last year in Pro-Am, and that's Mark. All right, I'm currently uh, broken down again with an air bubble in the fuel. And we have a monster truck now trying to <clears throat> pull us up something. It's amusing me. It's like try number three. Here we go. Come on, monster truck. Ah, oh, and the strap broke. You can never see the elevation and anything off-roading. Makes it look too easy. anticlimactic and I just wanted to explain something really quickly uh, we worked for two to three days extremely hard getting almost no sleep I was really ruining my not really ruining mark and true and the other people that helped me are super friendly and they like helping so I am really grateful to have awesome awesome friends but a lot of the time I feel like I am punishing everybody and making everyone's lives miserable with us working on projects and it can be awful, like really, really bad when you're like, I mean, like we probably put in more than 40 hours each in a three day stint of time or something like that. It doesn't even seem possible, but we have a timeline we need to make and you gotta make it. So we push ourselves and push ourselves until we make the deadline and leave. And it's for vacation. It shouldn't be so like detrimental to our bodies, which hurt after all this stuff. So anyways, uh, we didn't get some of the stuff done. We did get the seats installed, which was the most important thing. We got the winch installed, which was also important so we can extract ourselves. Um, when we're off-roading at the Bridgeport place, the vehicle did great. It didn't get stuck anywhere. It's super capable. 40-inch tires helped that. Um, and huge portal hubs and stuff so that the suspension clears everything by a ton. But um, as the vehicle is going up hills, it would draw air into the system. 
And we're not diesel mechanics, so we didn't know what was going on. And our diesel mechanics are like, ah, we work on new ones. We don't know what's going on either. So I asked somebody on Instagram, his uh, Instagram handle is Dirty V. It might be Dirty, Dirty V90. I'll put it in the description right here. He really helped out and he has a cool rock crawler one. So I've been bugging him, asking him questions. He was like, sounds like your lift pump because we were gonna drop the fuel tank and look in there to see if you know something was on hills. We were thinking something was either drawing air because the pickup was in a weird place or maybe there was debris getting in or something. Um, but it turns out, because that's the kind of stuff that happened in my rock crawler with the fuel cell and all that stuff in my Jeep. But it turns out here, it was just a really low pump, fuel pressure pump, which is a lift pump, which is mechanically driven off the engine. Maybe the diaphragm was like leaking air in, or maybe something was just getting old in it and was dying. But under load at low RPMs going up a hill, it would just turn off basically the engine because it was sucking in air somehow. Um, so at Bridgeport, we were just cracking open a fuel line at the injection pump and turning the engine over until fuel came out, closing it back up, and then turning it over until the fuel got in the motor and then turned over the motor and we could drive again. And then we'd drive around for 30 minutes or something, and then it would do it again on another big incline. Uh, got kind of sketchy because I had to back down some of this stuff sometimes. But we just rolled the dice, replaced that injection pump. I wasn't very expensive, I don't remember, but it was pretty cheap because it's like a low pressure, really cheap old school carbureted type fuel pump kind of design. Um, fixed everything, boom, done. And we are headed to Colorado in the video. Uh, some of the Colorado content's already out on other people's channels because some of my friends edit way faster because they're professional YouTubers and I am not. I'm an event host who just enjoys YouTubing and doing this stupid stuff. Um, but I love the stupid Humvee. We're going to Colorado. All the footage is gonna be posted soon. I hope you enjoy it. I'm sorry I'm not faster with this stuff. And bye. We'll see you in the Colorado footage.